We are approaching the end of our debate, and this is the last question from Chris Coates and candidates. Instead of 60 seconds, you have 30 seconds to answer. Chris, please deliver that last one. <laughs> Put your thinking caps on. What is your position on the recommendations of the Richmond City Charter <laughs> Review Commission? Which specific parts do you support, and which do you not support? 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone or do uh, we just go? Patterson. Oh, okay. oh, it is me. <laughs> okay. So I think the charter review was a very thorough evaluation. There are many recommendations. I think we do need to look at how we are structured for our election cycle, more importantly, the positions. Uh, we should look at at-large op options as well to make sure we're representing the entire city as a whole. But also, I think there's some changes we could look at to making sure the structures between city council, the mayor's office, and the administration are seamless, but more importantly, clearly defined. That is one thing I've struggled with, and I want to make sure we understand how to work together more cohesively for your benefit to improve the city of Richmond. Dr. Avula. I think there's a lot of really good work that the Charter Review Commission has done. I've already committed to doing some of those recommendations, which are showing up to city council meetings and answering questions in a public forum. Uh, I also think the most important part of how we move forward as government is that mayor and city council work together in genuine partnership. Uh, that will help solve a lot of the issues. But uh, if the people of Richmond continue to feel like a structural change is made, I won't stand in the way of that. I will absolutely work with council to make sure that we build city government the way that the people want it. Mr. Nedlin. So no matter which charter is in place, it won't amount to anything if we don't have integrity, transparency, and accountability. Um, that's the core of what we do. So with whatever change we make, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Um, a lot of what we heard today is what candidates have done when they were in seats and um, what they would do now. It's just what I hear is failure after failure after failure. I'm tired of losing. Um, if, if they were so great, you know, we would be in a position of not having these discussions today. So that's my answer to the charter change. Mr. O'Day. I'm really proud of the vision that I've set forward for City Hall, and it's why I'm honored to have earned the endorsements of so many groups that represent a diverse cross-section of Richmond. We're building a broad coalition, and as I've talked to those people and listened to them, the charter, we can change it, we can make small modifications. What we need are leaders who stand up for what's right. I'm a proven Democrat who's ready to start doing this job and getting the work done on day one, and I look forward to earning your support too. Thank you. Ms. Mosby. So um, the charter has a lot of different changes that as a mayor, I was going to do anyway. Making sure I've been on council, so I understand the importance between a mayor and a council and that working relationship. So being there quarterly to ensure that I'm a part of the council uh, dais as our, our residents come before us. But let me be clear. I have the council, more council, more school board, more state legislative, and more regional endorsements than anyone up here. Why? Because what they know is that I am committed to Richmond. Whether the charter says it or not, I'm committed to Richmond. They know I'm committed to win-wins, and they know I'm committed to a Richmond that's going to work for all of us. And that is why these different legislatives have decided to endorse Michelle Mosby for mayor, so that they can work with a candidate that's going to work for you all.